Hey, accounting scholars! Welcome to chapter 13. We are moving toward the end of our course, and uh, this is very exciting. And probably one of the more interesting chapters that we're going to be talking about is chapter 13, which is all about equity financing. Um, and equity financing is just a fancy word for financing your business either through stock or long-term debt. So let's, uh, let's get started. Let's get started and talk a little bit about debt financing. Debt financing has uh, financial risk associated with it, uh, but also has ways that you can measure it in order to uh, in order to determine if that's the right route for you to take so let's talk a little bit about financial risk um, obviously if you use debt financing and there's several several types of debt financing on, on this particular slide you see the uh, US savings bond um, that is uh, bonds are a way for corporations as well as the United States government uh, to finance um, uh, their company, their organization or company. Uh, it's a commitment to uh, pay back a certain amount that is borrowed uh, in the future. And uh, however, with any obligation, whether it's a liability or a long-term debt uh, like a bond, uh, that has financial risk associated with it. And there's a chance that the company cannot meet its debts obligations, so you have to take that into consideration. Uh, but one of the ways to do that is to measure uh, the company's debt to equity ratio uh, and determine, you know, is is the proportion of debt to equity uh, in balance? If it's not, if you have a lot of debt as compared to equity. That's not a good thing. If you have a small amount of debt compared to equity, that's a good thing. That's probably a good indicator you're going to be able to meet your obligations or the company is going to uh, be able to meet its obligation. Okay, so with risk, there is always reward. And um, one of the rewards of debt financing is something called financial leverage. Uh, leverage, as as the traditional term means, as you might have investigated in your physics, physics classes, basically means you, with a small amount of effort, you can you can uh, uh, exert uh, a significant amount of energy to accomplish a task. And in this particular case, the rewards associated with financial leverage basically means the opportunity to generate a return that is greater than the cost of borrowing. You know, for instance, let's say you want to finance a project and you go to the bank um, and say, hey, I'd like to take out a long-term loan for an interest rate of 8%. Um, You've done your you've done your analysis of your project, and you and you're feeling pretty good that you can generate something in excess of twelve to fifteen percent. Well, that would be a good financial decision uh, because then you would uh, uh, be able to pay the bank uh, back on the long term loan, yet you would still be able to make money on the project and. This is uh, this is good because at the, when you do this type of financing, um, you are leveraging your equity. Uh, so you return on equity, the return on the amount of uh, money you have invested in the business uh, is high, and that's a good thing. So um, that is one of the re that is, that are that is one of the rewards of uh, of that financing. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at the various ways you can create a business and finance a business. 
Uh, some of this will be review for many of you, so we'll move through it relatively quickly. Um, but at the same time, for those of you that are new to this, uh, uh, you know, make sure that you are very familiar with the uh, the various advantages and, and disadvantages we're going to talk about. So, a sole proprietorship and partnership, you know, any of you could create one of these or one of these entities tomorrow, right? Or tonight, you could create a business on your own, or you could call a classmate and say, "Hey, let's let's form a partnership and uh, let's start doing business." Like anything else, there's advantages and disadvantages. And in this particular in this particular case, uh, the advantage of a sole proprietorship and partnership is the ease of formation. Um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, you could start one tonight. Uh, second, uh, the income tax is only taxed at the individual's level. And by this I mean when you fill out a tax return, you're essentially filling out one tax return and it's it only is taxed once. In a corporation, um, it is taxed twice. It's taxed at the corporate level, and then it is taxed again at the um, at the individual level when the individual receives dividends. Okay, uh, the third is when you typically have a sole proprietorship or a partnership, um, the owners are typically all in. There's more involvement uh, of the owners in in the business and therefore uh, businesses tend to be more successful when there is direct uh, owner involvement but there are obviously some disadvantages of a sole proprietorship and a partnership um, kind of the bad news with a sole proprietorship or partnership is uh, unlimited liability uh, you don't have the uh, the veil or the wall of uh, of corporate limited liability in a sole proprietorship or partnership. Well, what that what that essentially means, if you open a business as a sole proprietorship or partnership, and uh, you get sued uh, for something that occurred in the business, uh, let's say negligence with a product, uh, someone used your product and and died or something like that they can take essentially not only the business assets uh, or can sue to take not only your business assets but they can sue to take your personal assets meaning your house uh, any any valuables such as cars uh, things of that nature so there is unlimited um, unlimited liability uh, second thing is uh, you know, you are going to have a limited ability to raise capital. Uh, you know, a sole proprietorship and partnership isn't really set up to uh, to raise capital, especially at the uh, obviously at the at the public level, like at a, on a stock exchange. Uh, so, you know, you would be basically. Uh, establishing agreements with other investors uh, on a private basis uh, the third is uh, you know a partner in a business is like picking a partner in marriage uh, except it's probably more difficult and more uh, more important from the standpoint that when you pick a partner in a business you're gonna probably be spending more time with that person than you are with your husband or wife so uh, and especially if there's money involved, you need to make sure that your objectives with your partner uh, are the same as uh, as his or her objectives. So uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Many businesses break up because the partners didn't really do the homework on the front end to determine that particular type of uh, type of fit. All right, guys, we're going to end it here. Uh, hope you're having a great evening or morning whenever you're looking at this video, and we will see you in class with a little quiz.